In this video, I'm going to share with you some of my quick strategies that I use to boost my mood when I need a pick me up. Having a list of tried and true mood boosters is helpful when you don't feel so great and you want to make the most of your day. And isn't that always the case? Sometimes, though, you just need a fix of dopamine to get you through, and there are so many effective ways that you can use to do this. I'm Mari Amaro, and I'm the principal presenter at The Highly Effective Teacher. I'm a teacher, and I've been working with students and supporting teachers for over 30 years. I'm passionate about teacher wellbeing, and I combine research and experience to provide strategies that improve teacher wellbeing, especially practices that take no extra time, that can actually give you back time because you're working more effectively. I love coaching teachers so that they thrive in the teaching profession, not just survive. Improved teacher wellbeing means improved student wellbeing, and that contributes to better social and academic outcomes for all our students. If you'd like to learn more about teacher wellbeing, please subscribe to our channel and ring the bell so that you receive notifications of all our videos. When you subscribe, that helps to support the channel and means that we can keep making these videos and get the information and support out to more teachers. The night before last, I had a really poor sleep and it threw my plans for work out because I ended up sleeping in because I fell asleep at 6 a.m. and I woke up feeling achy and tired and really disappointed that I didn't get the early start that I'd planned. Because I felt so bad, I decided to make the most of the day by using some of the strategies that I've learned through my research into wellbeing and my work here with you. And I employed some of those techniques that help boost mood and feelings of wellness quickly some quick fixes that work for me when I need a pick me up. And one of the most effective mood boosters is to do something that you think is fun. And for me, one of those things is dressing up. So I organized a costume for my grandson's birthday party. The theme was Marvel, so I went as the Black Widow and I think I did pretty well. It was fun. Now all the strategies I'm gonna talk about are able to be used easily and can be incorporated into your classroom with your students when you need to pick me up or when you all need a brain break. Number one, positive self-talk. Yesterday, my mind started to go into negative self-talk and self-blame. So I changed it to a much gentler approach to myself and gave myself a break. It's okay not to live up, your, up to the expectations you set for yourself, to not be perfect, to make mistakes. And it's okay to let yourself off the hook. Most people are so harsh on themselves that it stops them from being successful and productive and moving forward because they make themselves feel so bad, they become paralysed. If you'd like to learn more about how to change your negative self-talk, check out our video that gives you strategies that you can use for yourself and things that you can incorporate into your social and emotional learning for your students. As the saying goes, change your thoughts, change your life. Number two, listen to music that you like. I started listening to some great music on the radio and listening to 70s music always makes me feel good. So listening to a few tunes and singing along helps to raise my mood and gets me moving. I like to listen to upbeat music as well as to ballads so that I can sing along. Music can change your mood like nothing else. Number three, move. The music also meant that I danced around the house, which reduced the aches and pains and made me feel happy and carefree. I love a good dance move and I even love a bad dance move. Change my clothes. I changed into my workout gear and my runners. I often feel that what I wear impacts my motivation and my inspiration. And once I put on my gear, I felt like going for a walk or going to the gym class. It's almost like magic. Just changing my clothes can get me off the couch and out the door. Number four, sing a love song to myself. This probably sounds a bit kooky, but it really feels good to sing a love song to yourself. And if nothing else, it puts a smile on your face because it's hilarious. I was listening to Minnie Ripperton and one of the lines in the song says, no one else can make me feel the colours that you bring. 
What a great line. And when I sing it to myself, it's even better. Next, cook. Yesterday, I decided to make myself a healthy breakfast and I took the time to enjoy the cooking for myself. And that really felt like I was taking care of myself. And it does. The feeling I get when I cook, when I make the effort to do that, really feels like good self-care. Enjoying the smell, taste and texture of the food also brings me into a mindful state. And last of all, gratitude. I found myself saying thank you for the lovely sunny spring day that we had. Thank you for the fact that it was the weekend. Thank you that I can afford to buy food and cook it and that I got to spend time with my gorgeous grandchildren yesterday. Gratitude has so many benefits and has to become a practice, not a feeling. And if you'd like to learn more about gratitude and how it can help you and your students in your classroom, check out our videos on why gratitude is good for you and ways that you can incorporate gratitude into the classroom. When you practice gratitude with your students, you're modeling good practice as well as using it yourself. It's a win-win. Thanks for watching. Stay safe, everyone. Happy teaching. <music>